Today, I'm going to tell you about uh, lasing properties of optical resonances with a very high quality factor called bound states in the continuum. And more specific, I will tell you how to improve the lasing properties, making the threshold lower by merging several optical bound states. Uh, I will tell you what is that and why is that a bit later. So the work is done mostly at the Korea University by Professor Hong Yi Park, as well as Professor Yuri Kipshar at the Australian National University and me from Eton University. So first of all, I'd like to briefly remind you that the field of metamaterials, which uh, emerged like 20 years ago, smoothly evolved into a new area called meta-optics. And here we deal not only with three-dimensional periodic structures, but also with the more simplified geometries like a photonic crystal slab, a metal surface, which is arrangement of particles on a substrate, and etc. So the main question that we ask ourselves when we want to design a photonic structure, which material we'd like to use? First of all, we have metallic structures. For them, we have strong resonance response due to small mode volume, but at the same time, strong heating and absorption losses. So here, the radiative losses, which is a gamma radiative, are lower than the absorption losses. And the absorption losses, they dominate the total losses. However, recently it was pointed out that the electric high index structures like semiconductors, uh, silicon, germanium, and etc., they could be also good candidates for nanophotonics making strong resonance response because of involving knee resonances. And uh, they also provide us weak absorption losses. Here, the radiative losses, they dominate. And in order to improve the uh, resonant enhancement further, we need to think how to decrease the radiative losses. So today I will tell you about the concept of optical bound states in the continuum. Some of you may have heard about it, but I will repeat it from the very scratch. Uh, I will tell you about a brief history of lasing observations with these BICs. I will tell you about a very recent concept of merging of several BICs in momentum space, which allows you to achieve a new state with remarkable properties, a super BIC. And also tell you about our experiments on room temperature lasing with these super BICs. First of all, just briefly, why do we call some optical resonance states with this peculiar name, bound states in the continuum? It goes back to quantum mechanics in 1929. The pioneers of uh, quantum mechanics, Newman and Wigner, they have found out that in addition to the conventional states uh, of uh, electron states in a potential well, which are bound states and extended states which are not localized. You could also realize a bound state within the continuum. And you could do this by smart engineering of the potential well. So here the state like technically has an equality factor because it doesn't radiate, but at the same time, it's within the continuum. So it kind of could be excited. So this is very interesting. And this was adopted to photonics. But before going to, into the mechanism in photonics, let's just briefly recall that for periodic photonic structures, uh, the main problem is diffraction because uh, the radiation is diffractive and the total radiated uh, losses, they are decomposed into a sum of losses into different channels, like normal diffraction, diffraction to the first and second channels. And on a dispersion diagram, we would see that uh, in the gray region below the light line, there is no diffraction at all. While uh, above the light line in the red region, there is only diffraction normal to the surface plane. So here we work in the sub diffractive regime. And it's the first uh, thing we want to do to decrease the losses, to improve the quality factor. So we cancel out all other uh, channels. We leave only the zero of one. Technically speaking, uh, the amplitude of radiation into some channel could be evaluated by using the block theory. So we decompose the electric field into the envelope and the periodic function. We decompose the periodic function into Fourier series. And these coefficients CS, they describe the amplitude of radiation into the particular S channel. So here, for example, the radiation normal to the surface plane, uh, it's described by the average electric field within the unit cell. 
again, looking at the dispersion diagram, we could see that this average electric field could go to zero or to a very low value by several reasons in a several points of the K space. So here, the black one is the uh, mode band diagram. And we see that at the red points, the quality factor diverges. So what happens here? At the origin of the K space at the high symmetry gamma point, uh, we have symmetry of the structure playing with us. So due to the symmetry, the inversion symmetry in plane, the total zero, the total field could be zero. And this is exactly the bound state. And also this average value could go to zero at some other state of the K space, just accidentally somewhere due to some uh, mathematical reasons, I would say. So uh, here we had the accidental state. So what did we get? We got a bound state lying within the green continuum. So this is our bound state in the continuum and it has a very high quality effect. From other point of view, the bound state in the continuum could be described as interference of lattice mode. So we have a lattice, we have lattice modes propagating to the right and to the left with different uh, K vectors. And the lattice modes with the K vector plus and minus one, they are synchronizing phases, for example, at the gamma point. So we have strong coupling between these lattice modes and we see the constructive and destructive interference. So the destructive interference gives us exactly the DIC because there is complete suppression of radiative losses. So we got a BIC, okay. It was first uh, experimentally measured for such kind of two-dimensional photonic crystal steps in 2013 by the group of Marian Salyacic. And they have observed indeed that the radiative quality factor it diverges in the vicinity of the gamma point and for some non-zero angle of incidence. But the total quality factor is not very high. It's like 10 to the fourth power here. Thank you, so, I'm very sorry. Uh, uh, there's a small yeah. question I see the, the raised hand in the chat. Dima, please. Mm, thank you very much, uh, Kirill. It's well known that in theory, when we don't have losses in our structure, our quality factor for any BIC should be infinitely large. But when we take into account losses of, of the material, uh, which quality factor should be great uh, for symmetry protected or for accidental BIC? Uh, that's a good point. I will tell about this a little bit later, like next slide. So uh, as you're right, there are losses in the realistic structure and we need to account them all to get the realistic value of the quality factor we could measure. So the, in addition to the radiative and the absorption quality factor, all the losses I was talking about before, we have surface roughnesses due to fabrication imperfections. We have radiation from the sample edges and we have a disorder effect. So the maximal quality factor measured based on all these uh, effects was 10 to the fourth power. And answering to your question, uh, for absorption, it doesn't matter which kind of BIC you have. But if you talk about this effect, the sample size and the radiation from the edges, then the accidental BIC gives you better quality factor because of its properties than the symmetry protected one. And I will talk about this a little bit later as well. So uh, we got a BIC, which is quite good with a quality factor, which is quite high. We need to uh, recall the recent uh, works on lasing with these BICs. So the first work on lasing with the BICs and more specific with the accidental BICs was done in 2017 by the group of Babu Karkante. Uh, and they consider it a dielectric membrane suspended in air. So you don't have a substrate here. Uh, they had predicted that in different calculations, the resonant wavelength in the reflectance spectrum, it vanishes for a specific, uh, the line width vanishes for a specific radius of your uh, unit cell, like the particle in the unit cell. So you see that there is accidentally like decreasing of the line width and here there is zero line width. So this means that we have this accidental BIC. They use the accidental BIC exactly by the reason that Dima asked because for realistic uh, uh, losses, accidental BICs gives you a higher quality factor than the symmetry protected ones. 
And in threshold measurements, they indeed observe the same behavior as in the reflectance. So you see that the threshold value, it drops down to the minima exactly at the radius corresponding to the appearance of this accidental DSC. And the minimal threshold power was about 15 milliwatts. Okay then, another experiment with lasing was done by the group of Arseniy Kuznetsov from Singapore, where they consider it uh, directional lasing. So they increased the period of the structure gradually, and they allowed diffraction to the first and minor first channels. That's why they kind of got the controllable directionality of this PIC lasing. Uh, so next, the last important thing I'd like to tell you about going to our specific results is a very fresh idea how we could improve the BIC even further. So uh, the group of Marin Salacic and Bojen from uh, USA suggested a very nice idea. They consider again the very same structure, the photonic crystal slabs with holes, uh, two-dimensional periodicity. And what do they do? They first study the band properties of some mode. So they took one TE polarized mode and they studied how the quality factor of this mode depends on the K uh, vector in 2D. So this is KY, this is KX, and the color is the quality factor. Here we have A, uh, uh, the latest parameter, the latest periodicity, uh, equal to some specific value. We see that there is a symmetry protected BIC at the origin, as well as a few more BICs existing at other points of K-space. So in total, there is nine BICs, eight accidental and one symmetry protected. This is the normal situation for a normal structure. So multiple BICs exist somewhere. Uh, the lower diagram is the schematic of the uh, polarization in the far field in the K space. So here we see that since the BIC doesn't radiate, uh, there is no polarization exactly at the BIC point. But there is some polarization around the BIC point, and the polarization it has some loops. Uh, so the BICs could be divided into pluses and minuses depending on the sign of these uh, polarization winds. And we see that okay, the BIC have different signs. That's okay. What will happen if we change the material properties or the geometrical properties of this structure? So the easiest thing to change is to fabricate a sample with a different periodicity, like in this middle panel. Uh, the BICs, they are very good states. They cannot disappear just when we change some geometrical parameter. They will still be there, but they will shift in the K-space. So they just change their position. And this happens exactly here. So these BICs, they move towards the origin of the K-space gradually we increase the periodicity and they gradually move towards the origin so here we see that the q is high almost everywhere and finally uh, at the end they merge and they produce a new state uh, which has remarkably different properties from a usual bic from this diagram it looks like uh, identically to a typical bic like the same but I will tell you a bit later why it's so nice. So uh, let's look at the quality factor dependence of this BIC and the merged BIC in one uh, cross section of the K vector. So we look only along one line in K space. The gray curve is the situation, the normal one. We had a BIC at the origin and two BICs accidental far away. And the red curve is happens when we move them towards each other. So they merge. You see that this red curve, it's much broader than the gray one. And this broadens, it's like the main properties. It's the main property of this state. If we increase the periodicity more, we will make the states interfere even, even more. And uh, the BIC, the merged BIC will go to a typical symmetry protected BIC without any peculiar properties. So uh, what's the point of this merged BIC? Why are they so important? For lasing, we need a sample of finite size. So it should have, for example, 50 by 50 unit cells to simplify the optical or electrical excitation of this lasing system. We need like a focused uh, excitation spot. That's why we need 
to uh, think about the quality factor of a finite size sample. Okay, I told you that accidental BICs play and work better than symmetry protected BICs for small samples. But are they the best solution or not? It turns out that the quality factor of a real cavity, it's indeed can be found by averaging the quality factor of infinite cavity over some region in K space. So you have some mixing between different states here. And like schematically, it's shown by this green uh, area. So within this area, we have averaging of the inverse, inverse quality factor. Okay, for the red curve, uh, it's exactly clear that the average will give us a higher value for than for both the gray and the blue, the, blue, the blue curve. So here we see that the red curve average gives us much higher quality factor. And this is the main property of this new BIC, merging BIC regime. So for finite size samples, it gives us the better quality factor. And this is very nice. So we decided to call this new merged BIC with our own name, calling it a super BIC. And we studied it for lazy. So, yeah, please. Uh, so here are the results of our particular work. Uh, we consider it the same structure of the same material with a very similar design. It's a photonic crystal slab made of indium gallium arsenicum phosphide uh, with holes. And uh, there are in, in incorporated seven quantum wells, uh, which has the laser, the emission wavelength at 1.5 micrometers. So we have a, an active system ready. <clears throat> we have studied the band diagram of this structure. So the red curve is the fundamental TE mode. Again, here is the quality factor of this fundamental TE mode in K space. Again, with the arrows are shown nine BICs existing in different points of the K space. The near field in electric and magnetic field profiles shows that it's a magnetic dipole mode. And what do we see with the quality factor when we change the periodicity? We see exactly the same situation as it was in that work in the nature, uh, that the quality factor shows three maxima, but they change to one maxima and very broad behavior. And gradually they change into uh, one very narrow maximum here. Uh, if we look at the um, shift of the BIC's resonant wavelength with respect to the lattice constant, this is still the calculations, we see that the accidental BICs on different uh, bands of the K-space, they shift gradually to the black curve. The black curve is the symmetry protected BIC evolution. So they all shift gradually to each other. And finally, they merge at some specific point with the lattice constant about like 576, uh, 576 nanometers. So here we have the merge state. And for this merge state, as we call it a super BIC, we would see that lasing properties are different. Uh, so our you, very sorry. Uh, yep. Yeah, Zoom Room 51 is mentioning that the Tusha Barishnikov has a question. So yes, please. Okay. No, sorry, I will ask later. Thank you. Okay. Oh, no sorry, Kirill, Kirill, uh, sorry, and Tusha, sorry. Uh, so the first observation we did personally in our work that uh, the best quality factor for a finite size sample will not happen when we merge the BICs totally. It will happen a little bit before merging. So how does this happen? We have uh, the right picture. We have uh, BICs located far away from each other. If we average the quality factor, we will, sorry, this uh, plot, it gives us the quality factor, this is what's shown here, versus the distance between the BICs and K-space. So here we have a far distance between the BICs and the quality factor is quite low. When we move them towards each other, the quality factor grows and it's reached the maximum, not when they merge completely, but then they're about to merge. They are not far away from each other. So well, this is like some intermediate situation between red and the gray curves. 
and then they merge completely. What's a factor by like two times? So I will first observe region before merging to get the high score effect. Next, we finally apply this collasing. So we fabricated this uh, photonic crystal step structure with 40 by 40 unit cells, which is quite small compared to some of other some other works. And here you see the extracted lasing peak react to the lattice constant for different modes. So for small lattice constant, we see a number of lasing modes appear, like two lasing uh, peaks at different wavelengths. The black one is the symmetry protected mode laser peak, and the red one is the accidental mode laser peak. And when we change lattice constant, they show the same behavior the Surreal. I'm very sorry. There, there has been some minor issues with the connection. Uh, itself. So other and finally red curve disappeared throughout the video then how it now okay yeah, yeah i think we can hear you i mean you can well if it works you can try to turn off your camera since we can hear you pretty well but the image is now frozen i mean the the presentation is uh, is visible but your uh, raised hand by dima dima please you have time for your question Thank you very much. It's about 21st slide. Maybe actually we have the same on the previous slides. Could you please show 21st slide? Okay. okay. So ah, next slide. Okay. So here on experimental results and uh, as in previous uh, graphs, we see that uh, merging between BIC leads to uh, increasing of, of quality factor. But what is the reason for it? Is just uh, the interference in the far field, or it's a kind of uh, hybridization and the interplay between modes that leads to increasing of uh, quality factor? So uh, yeah, can you go to the previous slide then? Yep. Answering to the question by Dima. So here we have, uh, if you look at the left uh, picture, for the gray curve when you have individual BICs. Uh, you have in the in the region between the two green vertical lines, you have quite low quality factor in average. But when they move towards each other, you just have like many states in everywhere in K space with a high quality factor. That's why for a finite size sample, in average, it's it's higher, and that's the only reason why it's better. Not no more other specific reasons here. Okay, then let's go further. Oh yeah, uh, there's another question by Christina. Yes, Christina, please. Um, I probably have skipped it. What is a red and blue line on this figure? So here, the gray line is the uh, before merging regime where the light is constantly small and the BICs are far away. The red curve is the merging regime where the, uh, all the BICs are at the gamma point. So they all are together. And the blue curve is uh, when we are far from the merging, like we passed merging. So we increase the lattice constant even further. And here, uh, the state from the uh, red restores back to the blue. So it's the same state as it was before. Like all the properties, they disappeared. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, please, next slide. And next, I uh, you know, he's staying here. Uh, so the insets on the right figure, on the left, the, it shows the far field of the accidental BIC laser mode. And uh, on the right, it shows the far field of the super BIC laser mode. We see that for the accidental laser mode, the far field profile is very uh, blurred and there is no like uh, specific features, but for the uh, super BIC on the right, it's like a donut shape, very sharp and nice, which is another nice property of this mode. Okay, next slide, please. Uh, here we compare the far field profiles in different regimes. Before we merge the BICs, when we about to merge them, when we merge them, and finally far away from the merge. So the top panel is the experiment, and we see that 
the size of this far field donut it shrinks so it decreases a little bit so what did we do how did we explain uh, this uh, decrease in size so the mold becomes more directional uh, in simulations we consider it the same lattice vector but we consider it different numbers of unit cells and we found the numbers of unit cells which suits best the experimental image. So what we saw is that uh, before merging for the lattice constant uh, five, uh, 568, the angle of the first maximum in the Fourier is uh, like five degrees and the effective number of unit cells you need for to repeat this is like 19 unit cells. And when we increase lattice constant at the pre-merging and merging regimes, uh, when the lattice constant is uh, 574, 75, the um, angle of the first maximum is much smaller. It's like 3.5 degrees. And the effective number of unit cells you need to represent the same is 27. So the reason that we have a shrink uh, far field image is the following we have effectively more holes playing. So we kind of effectively increase the structure by merging the BICs. Uh, so it's like very nice. You could have a small structure in experiment, but effectively it plays as a big structure. Uh, the next slide, please. Here we look at the lasing properties, the LL curves uh, for different regimes before merging, uh, at the merging and after the merging. So here we see the black curve is the intensity dependent on the pump power. Okay, it shows a typical latent behavior with a threshold. Uh, and the blue curve is the line width of the lazing peak. It also shows that the lazing line width decreases when we go from the spontaneous emission to the lazing regime. The lower left figure is the threshold dependence on the lattice constant extracted from all this experimental data. We see that the threshold, the average threshold power density, it uh, drops down uh, with the lattice constant increase. Again, repeating all those pictures for the quality factor and etc. We see that the minimal threshold is realized at the pre-merging regime at 574 nanometers. So we have the BICs almost almost touch each other in the case space. And the mode, the, the lazing mode quality factor on the right, also extracted, it shows the increase. But unfortunately, if we have our spectrometer resolution limit. That is why the maximal value is limited by like almost uh, 8,000. But actually, it will be much higher. Okay, next slide, please. We also extracted the polarization resolved lazing images uh, on the top panel. And here we see that the um, uh, orientation of the polarizer is shown with the arrow. So the minima of the donut shape uh, image uh, is exactly it's collinear with the polarization with the polarizer X. So it repeats uh, like the standard uh, the standard donut shape uh, polarization resolved images. Also, we have measured the interference images. Uh, the left one is the spontaneous emission. The middle one is amplified spontaneous. And the right one is the lazing regime. We see clearly that the interference appears only in the lazing regime. So we have proven that that is indeed the uh, true lazing regime. Then we have uh, uh, plotted again the intensity versus the pump power, and we fitted it with the rate equations. So uh, by the fitting, we achieved uh, the value of spontaneous emission enhancement factor of 0.01, which is not bad for such kind of structures. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, next, we measure the time result photoluminescence spectrum for the spontaneous emission and the lazy regimes, and we clearly see the difference. So we go from 115 picoseconds to 140 picoseconds, and uh, clearly the, um, uh, the right figure, the 140 picoseconds, it could be used even for ultra-fast uh, modulation if, you, if we would like to. Uh, so uh, the next slide, please. 
finally, the main point of the paper, the comparison with the earlier works and trying to claim some records. So we compared our laser with uh, four or five other BIC lasers uh, where people have shown ultra fast modulation, we have shown lasing with colloidal nanoparticles arrays or directional lasing uh, and other types of BIC lasers, but they, that was all an ordinary BIC. And as well, we compare them with the topological lasers. So we see that uh, the threshold peak power recalculated for each paper into the uh, like uh, the peak value is the smallest for our work. It is uh, about 50 times smaller than uh, in the Nature paper by 2017, where they had uh, the first BIC laser. And it is like 10 to the seventh power smaller than for many other BIC lasers. And the same happens for the threshold power density. So the measured load factor, unfortunately, is, uh, as I said, not very high. But this is only because of our limitations in spectrometry, uh, spectrometry measurements. So uh, that is the main result of our work. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? So the idea is that we had shown that we could achieve a super BIC regime when we merged several BICs in the Farfield region. It was shown before, but we had shown that at first for finite size samples, it is extremely important because uh, you could achieve a much higher quality factor than a typical BIC, and you could achieve it in the pre-merging regime. And later we were first to show the lasing with this BIC, and we had gradually shown three lasers on the same platform, the symmetry protected BIC laser, the accidental BIC laser, and this new super BIC laser. And we had shown that they provide us reduced threshold, they provide us shrunk far field images, and as well, uh, the decay time is quite fast, so we could use it for high speed modulation. Uh, that is the main idea of our work. So the external quantum efficiency was measured. It was not very high. It was about 1%, but still higher than for many small scale lasers. Uh, and the next slide, please. I'd like to thank uh, the PIs of this paper, Professor Hongi Park from Korea University and Yuri Kipshar from the Australian National University who conceived and uh, did all the main part of this work. And thank you for your attention. Uh, I'd like to answer the question. So I see a question from Sergey. Yes, Sergey, please. You can. Uh, I can either read your question or you can. Uh... Yeah. Uh, so can you show photoluminescence spectrum of the slab and compare it with the photoluminescence from photonic crystal before and after lasing? So I don't have it on me now, but. Potentially, we could do these measurements, yeah. So you want to see which part of the photoluminescence goes from the slab and which one goes from the resonance, yeah? Yeah, I wonder uh, why do you have such small um, shrinking uh, narrowing of the line before and after the threshold? Because it should be like 10 times difference, but in your case, you have just um, uh, maybe 50% narrowing so i wonder uh, did you observe some kind of narrow line before laser threshold already and then uh, you have some not very pronounced uh, transition to laser mode as far as understood uh yeah it's a good idea i think yeah yeah i don't have the data right now but i think it could be an explanation that we already have the uh, like the reducement of the threshold before we go to the lasing. That's why the difference is too small. And regarding the line width, uh, the line width difference is also very small, but it's just because of the spectrometer issues. OK, I may ask a second question regarding these quality factors. Uh, I am a bit um, missed, maybe. Uh, what, do, what do you mean when you show uh, this quality factor more than 7,000? Uh, this quality factor of the BIC mode 
before lazing uh, before lazing threshold or after lazing threshold uh yeah it is the um, quality factor after the lazing threshold so it's like the quality factor of the lazing peak uh, so the wavelength over the line width of the lazing peak it is not directly related to the quality factor of the mold itself but it shows yeah. uh, the magnitude of increase and we haven't measured the linear spectra and the quality factor of the mold itself. But it was but, done but guess, in the... Yeah. yeah, but I guess before lazing threshold, this uh, line with before lazing threshold indicate, should, should be direct measure, uh, like a direct indication of the value of this quality factor of your BIC mold. Before, because you don't have this nonlinear effect of uh, lazing, lazing modes and narrowing. After this Can we go a few slides before? Uh, Gosha, can we go a few slides before, please? Yes. Uh, before, 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 before. This one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah here, yeah. yeah. I guess before slash threshold, you have real quality factor for your BOC mode. Uh, yes? Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, yeah, this also can be plotted. I mean, if. We could uh, compare the quality factors uh, before the threshold, and it would be the modes. Yeah, and after the threshold, it will be the latent peak. So it, it will be similar uh, magnitude of values, as you, as you can see, like difference in two times. Yeah. Okay. So, and the reason uh, that that you have your spectrometer it, uh, doesn't have a good enough resolution, yeah, to show, but maybe your yeah. DC mode has even larger quality factor. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, most likely it does uh, because uh, the original paper I cited in Nature 2019, where they first predicted this super BIC, they measured 10 to the fifth power quality factor in a very similar structure made of the same material. It was a, a little bit larger in size, but nevertheless, they had 10 to the fifth power. So I think that here we have at least uh, multiple times 10 to the four power to the pure quality factor of the mold. Yeah, thank you, thank you Sergey. So uh, there is a question. Okay, Maxim, yes, please. Yeah, thanks. So Kirill, uh, I wonder if uh, by using different symmetry of the lattice, you can uh, even further enhance this effect by increasing the amount of BIC which you merge. What about C6 lattice symmetry, for instance? Could you comment on that, please? Yeah, thank you. Very nice idea. Uh, so when you have a C6 symmetry, for example, you could definitely achieve a, a regime where you have more than nine BICs in the K space. But the only thing which matters is how many BICs you have only on one line. Because when the BICs come close to the origin, uh, the quality factor will form a circle, like almost a circle. And it doesn't matter how many BICs you had, 9, 16, 20, they all form a circle and the dependence will be the same. So if you have and multiple BICs on one, like for example, horizontal line on the gamma X uh, direction, not now we have three BICs on gamma X direction, two accidental and one symmetry protect. If you have five BICs, that could help to improve the uh, quality factor at the end. But I, I'm not sure this can be achieved by this lattice, uh, by the change of the lattice symmetry. This could be achieved for by, by, by like specific playing with the parameters, like making, for example, dub, double grading structure with multiple BICs or something like that. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Yeah, thank you, Maxim. <laughs> Yeah, very nice comment by, by Yuri in the chat. So, uh, Hadi, freshly defended doctor, can you read your question aloud or should I do that? No, no, I will do it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, so uh, I just get that super it comes from the super cell, not from the quality factor, right? Uh, no, no, no. Super comes so. There is a term super cavity mode, uh, which was proposed by Professor Yuri Kirshar in 2017 when the first uh, BIC lasing was reported because it has superior properties as well as far as I understand. And here we have a super BIC as an like extension of the super cavity mode 
that was a super cavity and this one is a super BIC. So it's like super, super cavity. So it's a further extension and a good term to like, when you say we merged a few BICs, it's a long sentence. And here we could say like a super BIC, sharp and concise. So you could explain what we mean. And Mikhail Rubin, of course, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, yep. Yes, so my other question, um, I didn't understand actually, how do you move them with just, with just changing the lattice constant? How, how does it work? Uh, yeah, okay, so each BIC is topologically protected. As I have shown you, uh, can we go like 10 slides back? Yeah, here, please, yeah. So here you see pluses and minuses. So they are all topologically protected which means that the polarization around the BIC makes a loop. And uh, the, um, uh, this makes them protected in the sense that if you change the geometrical parameters, this polarization loop, it cannot disappear. It's a mathematical property. It cannot just uh, disappear. So it should be somewhere, it should exist in the case space. So the only way to keep it is to move the BIC some. So to move the BIC somewhere in the So, so they, they are inherent to the to the lattice symmetry, not to the unit cell itself. Uh, no, the mode appears due to the unit cell properties, but its location in the K space it's uh, it's uh, directed by the lattice symmetry. But you. Uh, you can change not the latest parameter, you can change the radius of the hole and keep the period constant. And you will see the same. The charges, all these modes, they will move. So you can change any parameter. In our case, the periodicity was the simplest one to change. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and uh, I've seen a raised hand by Xusha Barishnikova. Yeah, thank you. Uh, maybe. It's a stupid question. I just want to uh, uh, check it for me. So pre-emergent uh, regime, it's about uh, when accidental uh, beaks are very close uh, in the K space to the symmetry protected beak, to, to the gamma point. Yeah, 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 yeah. And merging regime is uh, about the situation when it is overlapped uh, with each other, yeah or, or not? Yeah, yeah, exactly, absolutely. So it can be seen on this picture on the bottom panel on the blue curves. So the left one is far away from merging. The middle one is the pre-merging. So they are very close to the gamma point all, but not exactly. And there is some point, some distance to the gamma point, like a mathematical value for which the quality factor will be the highest. And finally, the merging is when they just touched each other. They just touched the origin of the case space. And if you increase the period further, you will see the same, the same single mode here, but the, um, like the presence of multiple BICs, it will be not uh, sens sensible. So you, you wouldn't, so the lazing properties and the mode properties will decrease further when you go far away from merging because these BICs, they will move in other directions in case space. You know, they could move uh, to other modes or somewhere left, uh, somewhere else. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm just uh, a little bit, uh, I just don't understand the uh, difference between central protected big and accidental bigs when they are in the same point, so. When uh, okay, yeah, there is no difference between them at all. Uh, but this is like a single point where they all go. Uh, yeah, I understand. Yeah, so there is no any difference between this. All the modes with the same properties. Thank you very much. Yes, so guys. Then uh, uh, I have just a small question. I want to include my uh, contribute a little bit to this uh, lovely discussion. I enjoyed very much the talk, Kirill. Thank you very much. Uh, by the way, uh, Sergei Makarov stole my question, but still I have some uh, question regarding the slide number 16. So uh, sorry for switching it for you. So if we talk about like uh, extending or shrinking the lattice, I just wonder in terms of experiment. So if you just, uh, I would say, as I mentioned, you've 
like uh, what was changing you were changing the lattice constant by i would say 10 nanometers yeah and that's it yeah 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 so it's very sensitive we change it for about 10 nanometers gradually by one nanometer in each sample and okay. we observe this transition from all the regimes so uh, in this sense it's sensitive but i think the lattice constant would be controlled very nice by uh, etching that's the parameter which is very precise yeah this is sweet since i just uh, i just wonder if you were uh like in in the case space you were uh shrinking your lattice by like two times it means that you will need to excite the area by four times larger beam to have the same area of irradiation i mean if you just uh increase your or just decrease your lattice by several nanometers it doesn't matter how many well i mean the the, the size of the yeah. uh, beam is just doesn't matter actually yeah, yeah and that's very nice uh, thank you for pointing this out because we changed the lattice for like three nanometers and we improve the latent threshold in 50 times so it's very nice yeah okay 50 guys. times compared to early experiments yeah yeah it's just beautiful yeah so uh any more questions comments suggestions uh acknowledgements gratitude to kirill and uh and co-authors and yuri for joining so if if not with that i would like to thank all the participants once again and huge thanks to kirill in such circumstances still being able to uh, give a beautiful talk on very very uh nice work and very i would say important feature of bic so uh with that i would like to end the seminar and as far as i understand the following couple of weeks will be devoted to schools on uh, numerical nanophotonics and uh, summer school meta-nano. So please stay tuned. Take care, guys. Thank you very much. Seminar is over. Yeah, thank you very much for saving me from this technical yeah, no problem. Worries. <laughs> yeah. We okay. enjoyed your, your, your talk a lot, so it was my pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, yeah, bye-bye.